my friends. We are back in social studies today. And today I am going to read another one of our little stories. Now, before we begin our little stories, we always talk about a few things first. And one of those things is that we talk about previous stories. So let's talk about a folk tale that we have already read. Um, do you remember the name of the folk tale we read yesterday? Hmm. Was that folk tale possibly called the Molina? Yes. So we are going to read about another folk tale that's similar to Thumbelina. Do you remember where Thumbelina was located? What country it originated in? It was in Denmark. Yeah. And that was in Europe. So today's story is located somewhere else. But before we get into that, I'm going to share my screen so we can go over our vocabulary words and that we can talk um, a little bit about words that we might not know in our story. And then we'll talk about where our new story takes place, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen while I'm doing that. I'm gonna talk to you guys. So we know that lots of people like to listen to and tell stories. I like listening to stories. And sometimes I like telling stories. And you know, we know that stories are told from all over the world. We've heard stories from, um, you're all different places in Europe, and today we're going to take a little trip and go somewhere other than Europe, okay? So let's look at what today's lesson is called. Today's folktale is from a country called Japan, and it is part of the continent of Asia. So we're going from the continent of Europe to the continent of Asia, which they're kind of neighbors, so it's not too, too bad of a jump there. But Japan is made up of four major islands, okay? And today's story takes place long ago on the biggest of these four major islands called Honshu. Now, the folk tale we're gonna talk about today is called Isun Bashi, or the one inch boy. Usun Bashi means the one inch boy in Japanese. Now, I'm probably saying these wrong and that's okay. I don't speak Japanese, but I'm going to try my very, very best to try not to butcher these words very too badly. Okay, so we're going to talk about Usan Boshi, the one inch boy. Now, that kind of sounds similar to the stories we've read in the past, because we read Tom Thumb, who was no bigger than our thumb. And we read about Thumbelina, who was tiny. And now we're reading about Usan Boshi, who is the one inch boy. So he's not very big, is he? So, all right, let's look and see what our words are for today. First word we have is astonished, feeling or showing great surprise or wonder. Isabel was astonished to find a pony standing outside her apartment building. Our next word is crammed, to fill something with more than it could easily hold. Marta crammed so many blocks into the container that the lid was not closed. Or you could say she crammed all her toys under her bed so her mother wouldn't see. Deeds, acts or actions. Simple deeds such as holding the door for others can make someone else's day much better. Dodging. Avoid by moving quickly aside. Chris was excellent at dodgeball, dodging every throw that came his way. Permission, approval to do something. The students asked their teacher for permission to throw a party. All right, so let's look at our map, okay? This is where our story is taking place today. Now, if you'll notice these red islands right here, that makes up Japan. Here's our four different islands. And the story that we're reading today takes place on the biggest one, this one right here. Okay. Now, our last story was in Denmark and that was all the way over here. Okay, so now we're all the way over here. Here's where we are and here's where our story takes place today. All right, let's get started. Long ago in a village in Japan, there lived an old man and his wife who more than anything wanted a child. They hoped and they wished. They went to the temple and prayed to the gods. May we be blessed with a child, they said, even if he is no larger than our thumbs. 
And then their prayers were answered. In nine months time, fine baby boy was born to the old couple. The child was lovely and very small. They called him Isun Moshi, which means one inch boy, for he was no taller than the, his father's thumb. So what other characters do we know that have the name Thumb in them? We know Tom Thumb and Thumbelina. The song Boshi grew up strong, smart, and helpful. Though he grew no bigger, when, he, when 12 years had passed, Isun Boshi came to his parents and said, Father and mother, please give me your permission to the capital city, for I wish to see the world, learn many things, and make a name for myself. Asam Boshi asked his parents to go to the capital city. When you ask for someone's permission, you ask them to let you do something. Okay, remember, because permission means to ask to do something. His parents were very worried, scared to think of all the bad things that could happen to Asam Boshi in such a city. But they knew their boy was smart and strong, so they agreed to let him go. They made for him a tiny sword out of a sewing needle. They also gave him a rice bowl for a boat and some chopsticks for oars. In Japan, people use chopsticks to eat with their, their food with instead of forks. So it kind of looks like two sticks that so you go like this to pick up your food with. See, these are the chopsticks. And here's his little rice bowl. In the rice bowl, he floated down the river, using the chopsticks as paddles when the water became rough and using his sword to catch fish. In a few days, he arrived at the city of Kyoto. Uh, long ago, Kyoto was the capital for Japan. Today, the capital is Tokyo. So this was like, that was so far long ago that now our capital's even changed. My, what a busy city this is, he thought. So many people crammed, remember, packed into one space, carefully through the streets, dodging feet and cartwheels. Remember, dodging means to move quickly. He kept walking until he came to a beautiful house, the largest in the city. At the foot of the steps sat a pair of shiny black etta, or wooden shoes. They belonged to the owner of the house who is the wealthiest lord in the city. The door of the great house opened. Out walked a man who put on the shiny black shoes. Usan, Usan Boshi called out, hello, hello there. The man looked around and seeing no one began to go back in. But Usan Boshi called out, down here, I'm down here near your shoes. Please be careful you don't step on me. The man who was the lord of the house leaned down and was astonished. Remember, he's surprised. He saw Usan Boshi. Usan Boshi bowed and politely introduced himself. My name, he said, is Usan Boshi. I have just arrived in the city and I would like to work for you. The Lord picked up Usan Boshi in the palm of his hand. In a friendly voice, he asked, but what can a little fellow like you do? A fly was buzzing around and bothering the Lord. So Usan Boshi, by his sewing needle sword, with a quick sweat, sweat away went the fly. So how does he help the Lord? He killed a bug, didn't he? You are quite an amazing little fellow, laughed the Lord. Come, you may work for me and live in my house. And so tiny Usan Boshi went to live in the big, beautiful house, the noble Lord. He made friends with everyone there, especially the princess, the Lord's lovely daughter. It seemed that he was always at her side, helping her in whatever way he could, whether by holding down the paper when she wrote a letter or simply by riding on her shoulder and keeping her company while she walked through the beautiful gardens around the house. In time, the princess came to feel a strong affection for her little helper. Okay, so let's take a moment and pause. So who have we met so far? We met the old couple who's Usan Boshi's parents. We met Usan Boshi. We met the Lord of the house. 
And now we've met the princess. So how does he help the princess? He's keeping her company and he's holding down paper when she is writing letters, riding on her shoulders, kind of talking to her. All right, let's keep going. In the spring, Usan Boshi traveled with the princess and her companions to the Cherry Blossom Festival. On their way home, they began to hear strange noises behind them on the narrow road. They could see nothing in the shadows when suddenly a huge monster leapt into their path. Everyone screamed and ran away. Everyone except Asan Boshi and the princess. Who are you and what do you want? cried Usan Boshi. I am Oni, growled the monster. And Oni, the Oni were terrible creatures who bothered the townspeople. But Usan Boshi stepped forward and shouted, get out of the way, you demon. I am here to guard the princess. Step back. All right, even though he's a small person, he stands up to Oni. What would you do if you were Usan Boshi? Would you stand up to that monster or would you run away too? Hmm. I don't know. He kind of looks terrifying. I don't know what I would do yet. Ha! We'll see about that, growled Oni. Then he snatched up Usamboshi, popped him into his mouth, and gulp, swallowed him whole. Down, down, Usamboshi slid until he landed plop in the Oni's stomach. This Oni should be more careful about what he eats, said Usamboshi. He pulled out his sewing needle sword and began to tickle the Oni's stomach. Ow! Oh! Ah! shouted the Oni. Then he gave a loud burp and out popped Usamboshi. The Oni ran away, burping the whole way. So how does he defeat Oni? Yeah, he starts poking him with his little sewing needle sword and he makes him burp him up, doesn't he? Usan Boshi ran over to the princess. She was bending down and picking something up from the ground. With great excitement, she said, look, Usan Boshi, the Oni was so scared, he dropped this magic hammer. If you make a wish on it, it will come true. Usan Boshi bowed to the princess and he said, my lady, I would ask that you make a wish. No, Usamboshi, said the princess. You won this because of your bravery. You should be the first one to wish on it. What do you think he's going to wish for? Hmm, I wonder if he'll wish to be tall. I don't know. Let's keep reading and find out. So Usamboshi took the hammer and said, I already have my greatest wish, wish, which is to serve you. But if I could have another wish, I would wish to be as tall as other people. Then he gave the hammer to the princess who made a silent wish on it herself. What do you think the princess wished for? Hmm. Then in there, Usan Boshi began to grow taller until beside the princess stood a handsome young man. That night when the princess told her father how brave Usan Boshi had, been and how he had risked his life to save her. The Lord was so happy that he gave Usan Boshi permission to marry the princess. And so you see, the princess's wish came true too. Usan Boshi's brave deeds or actions were celebrated throughout the land. He and the princess lived happily together along with Usan Boshi's parents, or proud and happy parents, whom Usan Boshi had brought, brought to the Lord's house to be part of his new family. All right, so let's talk about our story. So what did the old man and the old woman wish for in the beginning of the folktale? They wished for a child, just like in Thumbelina and in uh, Tom Thumb, they wished for a child. So what, I'm sorry, who did Isambu she work for when he arrived in Kai? He worked for the Lord in the city. Yeah. 
What brave deed does Usamboshi do? He chased away that monster, the Oni. Yeah. What did Usamboshi wish for on the Oni's month? Or that? Let me try that again. What does Usamboshi wish for on the Oni's hammer? He wished to be as tall as other people. What do you think you might have wished for? So our other folktales, Thumbelina and Tom Thumb, in the end, they both stayed very small. So what happens to Usamboshi at the end of this folktale? Yeah, he grew taller and he got to marry the princess. All right. So today you don't have an assignment to go with our lesson. So nothing for you to write today. Once you finish this video, just make sure you click Mark is done. And that way I'll know you finished it and I can check it off in my grade book. Okay. Now I will see you guys in our next lesson. And I think that one is Little Red Riding Hood. So we'll look forward to seeing that. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Bye guys.